Oh, cold one today guys. I think it's the 30th of November or the 1st of December. The magpies are cackling away in the wood and there's a heavy ground frost. The sun's just come up. Hey guys, how are you doing? So I'm here on the allotment uh, in the cabin at the end of the allotment. The shed, the, the typical British allotment shed. And as I alluded to in my last video on the workshop heater, I have just built a brand new stove for the cabin. And this is it. You can see the size of the stove. It's, it's uh, 10 inches high, I think 14 inches wide maybe, and I think it's 20 inches long. It's got a four inch flue. And it's got a little stand made out of rebar. It's late in the afternoon here. It's about to go dark. I think it's coming up to about four o'clock. It's got the window wide open and the cabin is absolutely cooking hot. Um, I'll give you some readings of the temperatures on the stove. 519 centigrade, 967 Fahrenheit. I'll give you a flu reading. The flu reading is 52 centigrade, so we're going from 500 degrees here to 50 degrees on the flu outlet. I'm going to take you and show you the flu, the flu output, what is coming out of the flu, should I say. That is what we're pointing out the flu currently which is purely condensation. You can see it go, It never travels more. It's traveling, the condensation is traveling about eight feet. And that is it, there's nothing after that. Let me try and follow that condensation trail. So where it is, there it is. And there it is gone. So that's a distance of about eight feet from the top of the flue. So that condensation, which is just, well, you can, you really, you really, you can't see it. You have to zoom in to see it. But it means that this uh, little stove is burning so efficiently. There's, there's nothing going up the flue except the moisture that's been driven off the fuel. And the flue outlet is on the back, at the bottom. What I'm actually burning is this real, real punky dried wood here that I've literally picked up off the wood floor. I kind of have to keep hope opening the door because it's just, it's just getting too hot in here all the time. Um, I'm, I'm now I'm going to close the air supply to the stove because simply because I've got to. The cabin is just too hot as it stands burning on the air supply which isn't massive. It's not a massive air supply. There's no ventilation on the front for the fire to get air at the front. It's purely sides and rear vented. And the temperature in the cabin at the moment is 32 centigrade, 88 Fahrenheit. Heat it's putting out the, on the amount of fuel I'm putting in, the quality of the fuel, as I say, is not good. It's, it's this stuff. It's really dry. There's no... There's no weight in it, it's about the weight of a bit, bit heavier than balsa wood. The only saving grace is I've got one cherry log in there, which although it isn't dry the cherry log, um, it's, it's got some weight to it so I wanted to see because I'm doing another I'm doing another video alongside this because this is the first test burn on this stove for my patrons so there's been a few other videos. There's, I think there's been three or three, maybe three, four videos on this stove from the initial design stage to all the changes that have been made to it. So yeah, it's what I call my little hybrid rocket. Not a conventional rocket stove. The only way I'm going to be able to manage this stove going forward now in this little cabin is to put one big dry log in this stove and let that one log burn and that will reduce the heat significantly. You can see by also by the way that when this door is opened there's no smoke, there's no flame, there's nothing evacuating from the front of the stove. It's perfectly burnable with the door open or the door closed. It makes zero difference really. The only thing leaving the door open lets more air get through the stove and increases the flue temperature and burns your wood faster. You won't get much more heat out the stove you'll just throw it up your flue this is what this stove has been designed to do 
It's been designed to burn slow and produce enormous amounts of heat from the fuel, which it has done <laughs> brilliantly. Okay. Well, the, the, kind of the best way I've found to manage this stove, this little prototype, is to just put kind of one log in. I haven't got any whole logs at the moment. I need some dried hardwood. So I'm just going to kind of put that in. So that seems to be the best way of managing this and keeping the heat down in the stove. Because even burning it with the, with the firebox half full is producing way too much heat for this cabin. And the way I'm burning it is with uh, one of the primary air supplies uh, just open, open halfway on the back, on the front here, and then I've got a, a primary air on the side, half open as well. So it's literally just getting enough oxygen, enough air in there to burn the gases coming off the wood, so that the chimney isn't stinking. If you get me, because if you exclude all the air, all you're doing is making charcoal, so the gas coming off the wood isn't going to burn and it's going to come out the flue. So I'm, I'm trying to keep it at an absolute minimum. It's just too hot in here even burning it like this so I've kind of burning it like this with the window open and this is what the temperatures are getting up to when I've got my little thermometer on the other side on far, the furthest point away from the stove which is over here in the shade and it's reading 32.3 centigrade so I have that little side window there cracked open about six inches. It's ridiculous saying this, but it, it's kind of keeping the temperature a little bit more stable. Yeah, it can be improved this stove, but I've literally got to build another one because there wasn't enough room inside this stove to make the changes I wanted to. But this, this stove is, once I've sussed it out, this stove is going to be just amazing for this 10 by 8 by 10 cabin. It'll be fantastic. My kind of answer to this version of this little stove, this hybrid, is to stack the top with a dense fire brick, maybe two, three inches thick of fire brick on the top as a heat sink, and to stop this producing so much heat into the room. I'm also going to put a paving slab stood up uh, like a 30 inch paving slab 30 inches by 24 inches i'm going to stand it up on the wall there and fix fix that to the wall which will further act as a heat sink um releasing heat when the fires eventually goes out at night so it'll be kind of like a little heat store well storage storage radiator storage heater if you like we'll kind of turn it into that um the fire bricks on top i'll be able to move them apart when i boil the kettle move them to the side put the kettle on when it's up to temperature like this, uh, it, it's, it's boiling the kettle in like four minutes now on this hardwood. It's throwing out so much heat. So with that one log, it's still kind of pushing out for 418 degrees centigrade, 785 Fahrenheit. I'm, I'm really pleased with it. But it's going to be modified, it's going to be changed. Right, that's it. Thanks to my patrons for your support, guys. And I will see you in the next one. Um, if you follow me on the veg plot, I'm just about to dig up the Yakon right now, the Peruvian ground apple. Because I don't want the frost tonight, which is going to be harder, I believe. I don't want that frost freezing my Yakon solid and ruining it. All right. See you later. Bye for now.